Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and today I'm bringing you some instruction on how to go surface to orbit, surface to rendezvous. So suppose you have a space station up there, you're trying to reach it with your crew transfer vehicle like you can see right here, and you don't want to spend a whole bunch of time launching and getting a rendezvous and fiddling with your nodes and everything. This is going to show you how to do that. Now right here you can see I have a MechJab window open, but I'm not going to do that in the first part of this video. I will show both ways. I'll show how to do it with stock and how to do it with MechJab to give a little bit of extra help on showing how long it's going to take to get places and uh, how close you are to your target. There's a couple other add-ons in here too, like an alarm clock and some things like that, but I'm not going to use any of that for this. We're going to try to do this stock. So let's get this thing started. See, I already have out here a space station that I put in orbit just for this tutorial. And I'm going to select that as my target, so set target, and then I'm going to mark this as being going toward target. It gives me an idea of how far away it is and how fast I'm moving relative to it. So you can see that I need to be getting up there doing uh, 2145 roughly meters per second in order to close the distance and get my speed to match it. So what I'm doing here is I'm watching for the space station's target icon to appear on the edge of my nav ball. I'm going to fast forward to try and get closer to having that appear. But this is going to give me a target that I can shoot for. So when that gets over into the about 60 degree mark, that'll be a nice easy target for me to hit. So here we go back and we launch. All right, so it was kind of wiggling there because I had uh, left it sitting for so long. But we're doing okay now. We're heading straight up. And what's going to happen is this target right here, uh, that's where I want to go. That's going to slowly move across my path as my altitude goes up. Since this is stock Kerbal Space Program, I normally run with Ferrum Aerospace. But I came back to stock because I think maybe more people use that. I could show how to do this with Ferrum, uh, but it's kind of about the same thing. You just pitch over a little earlier. So because this is stock, like I was saying, I'm going to pitch over at 10 kilometers. Uh, that's the standard for this thick, soupy atmosphere. Let's get rid of those boosters. Okay, so I'm going to get over just a little bit now. And at this point, what you're trying to do is chase that target. By the time you're hitting 10, you want to be pitching over until you're on that 90 number right there and staying right in front of this target. So there we go. Okay, so I can see right there that I'm doing well. At 40 kilometers, I can bring out these solar panels, so I'm watching for that. I'm also watching for uh, how I'm doing down here to make sure that I'm staying in front of my target. If you ever get behind your target, you know that you're definitely going to be coming in behind your target. Because I'm in front, I know that I'm closing the distance because my uh, prograde vector relative to my target is still way over here. I know that because I can see my retro vector right there. The retro vector is the one that has the little X through the middle of it, and the prograde is the other yellow one that doesn't have the X. This is where the target is, where the target's going right now, and what I'm trying to do is bring my direction where I'm going to match the direction where it's going. And if they get on top of each other, that means we're both going to the same place. Even if we have different, strange, different orbits, if I can get one on top of the other, we're going to the same place. And obviously that's what we're trying to do here is rendezvous. So I'm going to switch out here and show another thing. We have this descending node with the dotted line that is the location where my orbit is going to hit the target. You see how it's falling behind my target? That means I need to pull up, uh, and that means going toward north. So I'm pointing the nose of my craft north, which is causing my descending node to move forward on the orbit. And now I also want to get my apoapsis and my descending node both to about the same place, ideally. It's time to stage. I'm going to switch over here, stage that start throttling up a little bit and take a look back out here again. Um, also, we're way past 40 kilometers. I'm going to bring out the solar panels. Okay, so 
looking out here, uh, the ideal situation is if you can get your ascending or descending node right here, it's going to be descending node because of what we're doing, uh, to be on top of your apoapsis and your apoapsis on top of the orbit, you can't really do much better than that. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to throttle back up again until that apoapsis hits the orbit. And if I can, try to push my descending node just by dipping a little bit below that line push the descending node up to meet the apoapsis at the same time that it hits the orbit. So keeping it under here, if it reaches it, then I'm going to pull back up to be on the line. And it's right about there, so I'm going to pull up and be on the line. Okay, so now we have the close approach markers showing up, and I want to eventually get my descending node in between them, and I want to get my apoapsis on this orbit. So step one, get the apoapsis on the orbit, throttle down, then, because the descending node isn't completely in the middle between these orange markers, the orange markers show where I'm going to be at my closest approach. I'm going to go down just a little bit below here and push that descending node to be sort of halfway in the middle of that. That's what I want to start off with. So just a little bit down, down further. Okay, that's pretty good. In fact, I now have my descending node on top of my apoapsis. My close approach markers are now splitting the difference. That's actually really good. So now we scroll out here and take a look at your orbit and the orbit of the target. So you put a maneuver node right on there and go prograde burn. This is going to cause the orange markers to start getting closer together. And what you're trying to do is get those on top of each other. If you can't get those, then you're trying to get the purple pink ones. But if you can get those others on top of each other, that's ideal. Uh, as they get closer, you're also going to notice that your orbit, periapsis, is pulling up out of the atmosphere. you got to make sure that that has happened too, and it is. So I'm just going to keep on going here, um, trying to get that orange on top of the other orange. And I'm almost there. Okay, so it's really close. Let's take a look. It says 2.7 kilometers. So that's it. We now have a rendezvous with our target. The reason why that worked is because I had my apoapsis in between those two. I had my descending node right on top of my apoapsis in between those two. And then we just did a prograde burn until those two came close enough together to be within five kilometers. Now it's just a matter of carrying out that burn and watching where we go here. So because it's uh, 18 seconds, I want to do about nine seconds of burn before and nine seconds after. Let's fast forward until we get to close to that. Okay, so 50, 40, 30. It's very close now, so I'm going to move my nose of my craft over to the blue icon that shows where it wa the node wants me to burn. And as soon as I start my burn, I'm actually going to get rid of the maneuver node because there we go, I'm gonna start my burn. I'm going to get rid of the maneuver node because I don't really need it anymore. I know that these two uh, orange markers are going to start getting closer together, and that's when I'm going to throttle down. When I have something where my periapsis is out of the atmosphere and where some kind of intercept has occurred. Actually, it uh, looks like it's going to be the second intercept. So I throttled down, and now I'm going to do very light throttle, watching that 15, 13 kilometers, light throttle, 6, 4, 3, one, wow, 0 0.9. Okay, so I have a pretty decent periapsis of 100 kilometers. I have a very nice intercept. This is the first one. The orange represents where you're going to be the first time you guys are close, and this is the second time. After we pass these points, then these will become orange because now they're the next closest place. So you'll see here, there it goes, and now they're purple. So this is orange. That represents where we're going to be at the closest point. If I want to get an idea of how long it's going to be before I'm there, I can grab a maneuver node right there, do a bit of a prograde burn to try and match the opposing orbit, and that will tell me about how much I need to burn and about where I'm going to need to be pointed when I finally get there. So I can even point there now because I'll still be pointed there when I get around. And it tells me that I've got about 25 minutes before I'm there. So I'm going to fast forward because I don't want to actually wait 25 real minutes, and I imagine you probably don't want to either. Okay, can't go above 50 when we're below 120, and I'm still below 120 even though he's above. 
not quite there yet. All right, nine, eight minutes, we're getting closer. And when we get there, see this marker here? That's actually technically the one that I wanna go for. This node is only showing me about, about where I wanna be. I don't really actually need that node. What I'm trying to do at this point is equalize my velocity relative to the target velocity. And that is this right here. The yellow with the X is your retro relative to the target. As long as you've selected target, see not orbit, not surface, but target. Then when you get here, and we're almost there, and there, that's really close. So now I put my nose on the retro vector and go 48 meters per second in that direction causing us to get closer together. So as soon as that slows down a bit, 10, 9, 8, 7, okay, stop. 1.3 meters per second, so somewhere out here is my target. Where are you? You above me, you below me, there you are. Okay, so the space station is 900 meters away. Next step is you find the target vector, there it is. What I'm trying to do is put the yellow one on top of the pink one. So we'll go over here. It's going to get dragged in whichever direction I'm going. So if I go on this side of it, then that's going to cause it to come closer. There, see? And there it is. So now it's on top. This means that I can stop going in that direction. And just because the yellow's on top of the pinky purple, I can just drive straight toward my target now. Uh, once I get to, say, 10 meters per second, I know I can divide this by 10 and get that it's about 80 seconds away. So I can fast forward here. So 10, uh, or 50, I, I mean, yeah, 50. So we're a little more than 40. Okay, at 3.30, we're going to be 30 seconds away. So I'm going to keep fast forwarding because we want to obviously get closer. Now, if I turn on the RCS, uh, my N key will allow me to use RCS. That's not fast enough. I'm going to flip over and slow down this way. So retro, burn. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to pick a port. Where is one? There's one right there. So you want to click the docking port, set as target. You always want to be controlling from one of your docking ports. And I'm going to go forward again here to get back on the other side of the one that I picked. So if we flip this around, we know that somewhere relative over here is where we're going. All right, so there's the docking port that I'm trying to target. And this is the direction that I'm going right now. I'm going too far up, so I want to... Okay, let's get that back to target. There it is. So now I can use my RCS to push that over toward the target and get the yellow on top of the purple. Because the yellow's on top of the purple, that means I'm now going directly toward that docking port, and if I did nothing, it would go there. Um, it might need minor, minor adjustments at times based on how far apart you are. Uh, also, if you are going too fast, you might want to throw a little break on there. So I'm going to hit the N key for a little retro RCS. Get down to maybe four, three, four meters per second. Four meters per second should be fine. Uh, the, the Keeping the yellow on the purple is important and keeping your nose on the middle of both of them is also important. Now my hands are off the keyboard. This actually is going to go in. However, one thing I want to do is make sure that I'm not going too fast right at the very end. So let's see, I do a little bit of retro. Come in at maybe there. Uh, two meters per second sounds good. And turn off my SAS. If you go in with SAS on and the other target uh, also has SAS, sometimes that can mess things up. Also. See, I, I'm not doing anything. It's just the craft is so small and the magnets are so strong, it's going to pull them together. There, I didn't even do anything at that point. I, I had stopped by the time we uh, got there. And you can do that too, as long as you have the yellow and the purple on top of each other uh, and your nose in the middle of both, you're heading towards your target and you can be hands off. 
Um, if you have a very big vessel, then you probably need to make sure that you are lined up a lot better than I was lined up there. But given the size of my vessel, I knew that the magnets would take care of things. So as I was saying, if you have your SAS turned on when you make your dock, it can mess things up. Also, the SAS fights against the docking node if it's turned on. Uh, so you want to make sure that it's off right at the last moment before you make your final dock. Also, if you don't want the station to be using its uh, RCS, uh, you can make sure that you've hit the RCS to turn that off as well. Because sometimes that impact of you docking up is going to cause the two of you to shake. And if the SAS is working, then the RCS is going to be going all over the place trying to stop. It's probably easier to just make sure nothing's turned on because then the physics engine will settle everything down. Now, we have another way we can do this. We can do this with instrumentation, and that means using MechJeb. Uh, let's go back down to the launch pad, and I'm going to revert this uh, back to launch, and we are going to show a way to improve this approach using some instrumentation from MechJeb. If you want to use MechJeb to improve your approach, then you can go into here on this little tab that comes out when you have it installed and hit Custom Window Editor new window and then we can name that something like uh, let's just do target here and then on your target you want a few things there's some tabs here that let you scroll through options you can choose you want closest approach to be in there you want the time to closest approach in there and it can also be helpful to have something from the orbit uh, your apoapsis and I'll move that up to be in between them. The apoapsis is going to tell me uh, when I've reached my right altitude because uh, we're trying to target 150 kilometers. Remember, that's where the space station is. Closest approach, as long as it's going down, allows me to know that we're getting closer, so that's good. I'm going to put this down here where it's easy to see because I'll be looking at my nav ball a lot, so I'm going to put this down here to also be able to see that. And now we need to find our target. So our target is right there, space station set target. And I'm going to do the same thing I was doing before. I need to be in target mode and I need the space station to appear in here. Because I'm trying to get my close approach vectors to surround something right around the same place where it is. So I'm going to fast forward until it's in there. It's coming closer and 60, 70, it's good enough. Okay, launching and off we go. So this is the same thing as last time. This is you just uh, keep yourself in front of that in stock Kerbal. Go up to 10K before you make your pitch over, but otherwise keep that in there. So we can see right now we're 150 kilometers away because it's almost directly above us. And what I'm trying to do obviously is get that to go down. When I see the apoapsis is down, uh, is up to 150 kilometers, I'm going to want to stop. Oh, I'm missing one other thing that's really good to have. It's the inclination relative to the target. So you can either open that up and hit custom editor or hit the E for edit. And we go here to target and find relative inclination. And I'm going to move that up in between the two. The reason I like it in the middle is I like my closest approach distance to uh, be on the top and my time to closest approach on the bottom. My reason for that is uh, I, it's easier for me to see the top and bottom and those are the most important ones. Uh, the apoapsis I'm only going to look at once and the inclination um, I'll only be looking at as we're launching. Okay, so I missed the 10K. I'm gonna pitch over here and head toward the target. So there it is. Now, as long as we are in front of the target, we are heading for it. If you're ever behind it like this, that means you're coming up behind the target. If you're in front, it means you're trying to come up in front of the target. So I'll keep this up. You can see the inclination changes. If I go up here, it goes higher. If I go down here, it goes lower. So you can uh, keep adjusting that as you're flying, trying to keep it lined up. Obviously you want zero um, for hitting a target. And you want this closest approach distance to be going down. I want to keep in front of that target to make sure that it's always trying to come down. And right here, you can see my apoapsis 
36 kilometers trying to get it to 150 so I'm just gonna keep on going you can see that because I'm using this instrumentation now I get to not bother with the map view I can look in here if my inclination is changing I can modify it uh, when my apoapsis hits 150 I can stop if my close approach is going up I know that I'm, I'm not going fast enough in the right direction and I can check to see which direction I need to go do I go up like this there it's not getting higher see now even though I'm a little bit behind it right now it's going down so I'd rather go down it must be because I was getting too far ahead of it here so we're on our final stage I can bring out the solar panels because I'm at the 40 kilometers uh, the closest approach is now still going down a little bit so I'm going to keep going up to my 50 there we go it's still going down I'm going in the right direction and I'm gonna throttle down a little bit because I want to hit that 150 mark right on the nose basically oh inclination is off let's uh, adjust that while we finish off here so I'm thrusting down here at the 45 because I just noticed the inclination was a little bit off I still need to stop my apoapsis around 150 153 because that's the orbit of the target though so keep them both going at the same rate inclination still going down we're at 150 now I can go a little bit further and because that inclination is still going down I'm gonna keep doing that maybe go even more toward the 90 mark nope yes that's going down no nope, that's going up so we'll stop right there yep okay so that's it if I look out at the map right now I should probably see that I have reached the same orbit with a relatively close inclination so let's finally take a look alright there it is so now as before I want to get that descending node in between these two markers so we are going to try to adjust that and I want to pull it back toward me so I have to go up like this okay bringing it back and come on get in between there right there okay so it's in between I'm my apoapsis, apoapsis isn't between them that would have been ideal but it's pretty close so I'm gonna go in between the two markers and in in between my apoapsis and the descending node this time scroll out here take a look do the prograde burn on the orbit watching for that target marker to come in and there it is there's one set over there there's one set over there so let's see we'll uh, pull back nope go forward a little bit to try and get those two closer together or would I actually go for this one that one's passed so let's go further this direction there it is all right 9.2 and remember I'm not actually going to use this node anyway what I'm really gonna do is I'm going to use this this time this is why this instrumentation is helpful I'm going to use this rather than this in order to know where I need to go the only reason why I need that node is to just get started so I want to be on the blue marker and then once I'm on the blue marker and once I'm at the point where I need to start that burn uh, then I can delete the node and just use what I'm visually seeing out here and in my instruments let's fast forward to get closer to where we need to be thank you alarm clock I know that I'm getting close to my target okay so about seven eight seconds early because it takes a couple seconds to throttle up so we're at one minute and okay let's get ready to do this we're pointing in the right direction uh, I will take the node off and now I'm watching this and I'm at 226 now here we'll start the thrust we know we're going in the right direction so I just keep watching that and it's gonna go down now here it goes 160 150 it's getting really close you can see right there okay one we're at 70 in the 60s 
Keep that going until it gets down as close as it can before it starts moving in the wrong direction. We're at one kilometer. Okay, I just saw it go past 500 meters and then back up to 900. So I know that that's a, I could back up a little bit if I wanted to, but 900 is also pretty close. I suppose what I could do is I could turn on the RCS. Uh, check this out. Turn on the RCS. See, my light's not on. No, the light is on. I'll turn that on. And then um, hit the either uh, H or N to go forward or backward on this and watch what it happens. So you can see by hitting H, it went up. If I hit N, it goes down. And I can get that as close as possible. There, it's going the wrong way, so go back the other way. In the 400s, that's as close as it's going to get right now. And so we just fast forward until we get close to that target. Once we get close to the target, it's the same procedure as last time. It's put yourself on the retro vector relative to the target, but the reason why this instrumentation is going to help is we're going to know exactly how long it's going to take to get there. So we know that we are nine minutes away from being at our closest point. Uh, that's because it thinks that this one actually is the closest point. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward to get close to that one. Five minutes, four minutes, three, two, one, slow down. 30 seconds, I'm gonna start about, let's say 15 seconds early because I have 73 meters per second to get reduced. Put ourselves on that retro relative to the target and burn. Get that down to zero, 40, 30, 20, 10, slow down, four. All right, we should be really close now. Where are you? There you are. We're out in the dark, uh, but you can see down on the city lights there. Um, but we're really close, and now what we'll do is what we did before which is find the vector that takes us toward the target, and there it is. There's our prograde vector over there. We want it to come this way and get on top there, so we're gonna go on this side to drag it closer. Do a little throttle, whoa, very fast. Okay, so I need to use my RCS because I need finer adjustments. We will use that and burn the RCS in the right direction here. To get the target you can see it's three minutes 20 seconds to target so i don't even have to do any math now i know that if i aim toward my target and boy this is a horrible lighting i wonder if i could fast forward into the light although that's my closest approach this is also only three kilometers away i'm going to do that i'm going to fast forward until we can get into the light because i'm only going to be uh three kilometers away if i don't go here at our closest point and we can do pretty well to stay relatively close. There, now we're in the light, it makes it a lot easier. I did let it get a kilometer away from me, but I can get that back fairly easily. We just go over here, find the target, know that because that's my retro, my prograde is over on this side. Uh, make a maneuver to go faster toward it here. And there, we're five minutes away again. Uh, we're gonna be 600 meters when we get there. So if I want to bring that closer, I can continue to do some throttling over here on the target. Watching that time to target, closest approach is in two minutes and one minute now. Okay, so we're one minute away from reaching our target and we're going 17. I'm not going to use my RCS to try and slow down by 17. I'm going to use this. You can also see we're going to be 43 meters apart part so obviously I might be colliding with it at that rate I am not going to want to uh, wait until the last second and see what happens I have 30 seconds I'm going to fast forward till maybe 10 seconds 10 seconds okay it looks like we're probably missing it and time to throttle trying to get this to zero
Okay, so there it is. Now, I already covered the docking last time. There's really nothing extra I can show you about how to do the docking using this instrumentation. Uh, it just helps because you know the time to closest approach. So when I do that, I know how long it's going to be. It's going to be one minute before I reach wherever it is I'm going. Right now I'm not going the right direction, so I'll keep using the RCS to move that yellow thing back down on top of the purple one, keep my nose pointed right at the purple, middle of the purple one, and that's it. So now I know it's one minute, 45 seconds before I dock. And that's all I have to do. Although I can see that I'm really not lined up here well at all. Um, one way to make sure that you're lined up well, you hit the V key to change your camera into chase camera mode. And then, let me slow down a little here. Then you can orient yourself to be behind your engine, looking down toward wherever your target is. And you know that, uh, what you're, you know how you're lined up at that point. So I can see what I want to do is I want to have my nose pointed somewhere in this direction to make it line up with that, which means I need to use my RCS to move myself down in the direction of the target and get this uh, up more in line here. And there it is, hands off docking. I just had to line it up and that was it. So that is it. That's launching with uh, MechJeb, launching without MechJeb. Uh, it's pretty much the same idea no matter how you want to do it. You just follow those same procedures and you will be docking and rendezvousing to your heart's content in no time. Uh, thank you for watching, Kerbinauts. I will see you later.